out of control spending, we are listening to the people and taking the first steps to change the culture in our nation's capital so that we can grow the economy and create jobs for all Central, Southside Virginians and all Americans. I ask my colleagues to support this amendment and the underlying bill. I reserve the balance of my time. Reserves his time. Who seeks time in opposition? Gentleman from Massachusetts. Mr. Chairman, um, I don't think there's anybody exactly in opposition to the amendment, because it doesn't do anything, but there is some opposition to the rhetoric, so I will claim the time in opposition to the gentleman's speech. In the first place, there is a consistent misunderstanding on the Republican side manifested by their talking about this as a program that there was foreclosed property. And that, of course, allows them conveniently to pretend that for every piece of property that a city is stuck with, there was an entity that stood behind it that foreclosed and can be sued. But that's not true. This is not only about foreclosed property. It is about foreclosed and abandoned property. And there is property that has been abandoned. And it has been abandoned by the owner who's walked away. It has been abandoned by some financial institutions that did not have the substance of banks. There is demonstrably property in the cities which cannot be traced. The chairman of the committee displayed a portrait, a picture before, of a beat-up piece of property and said, look at this piece of property, it's so far gone, who would want to buy it? We said, no one would. It should be demolished. Tell us who owns it. He said, you can always find out who owns it, except for that piece of property. So it's not just about foreclosed property. Somebody has to demolish property where there is no owner. Somebody has to demolish property where there was no responsible party standing behind it. I just left the chamber to meet with three firefighters from the city of Fall River in my district. They were appalled at the notion that they would be left in the city of Fall River to deal with abandoned property, which is a set of fire traps, and not have any help. So for that reason, I believe that we ought to be clear that this is not about only foreclosed property, and some property, by the way, has been foreclosed upon by entities that are bankrupt, by entities that have no funds. The other point I would make, though, is this. I do agree with my colleagues that we should do something about the deficit. Now, I wish that they listened to that when we subsidized agriculture or when we sent money to Afghanistan and Iraq for their social purposes, but I have an alternative. I will repeat again. They'll ignore it all day, I know. In the bill that originally authorized this billion dollars, we required that it be funded not by the general revenues, but by a special assessment on banks that have 50 billion or more in assets, financial institutions that have 50 billion or more in assets, and hedge funds at 10 billion. Now let's be clear, Mr. Chairman. Members on the other side know this bill is unlikely to become law. Indeed, uh, some have even said they understand the money will be spent before it can move. So the billion dollars is almost certainly going to be spent. My colleagues now have a choice. They can allow it to be spent by the taxpayers, or they can reconsider their opposition to our proposal of last summer and assess this on the large financial institutions and hedge funds. And by the way, some of it, it is true, was caused by banks, and some of it will go to banks. But here's the answer. Instead of complaining that some of this will go to banks, join us and have it all come from banks and from hedge funds. But please, Mr. Chairman, let's not perpetuate the myth that for every piece of property with which our poor cities and rural areas are burdened, there is somebody they can go and sue and get it down. In fact, the gentleman from California himself has said, well, they get the bulldozer and tear it down. Those bulldozers cost money. The people driving the bulldozers cost money. So we believe that the approach should be to take money from the large financial institutions and from the hedge funds and take the billion dollars from them and provide it to municipalities and groups like Habitat for Humanity and others who will use it either to tear down the property in some cases or rehabilitate the property and make it affordable housing. That, Mr. Chairman, is the choice between us. And again, I want to stress this notion that it is only foreclosed property is a misstatement with a purpose because it means that you ignore the fact 
that much of the property existing in the cities is abandoned and will only be dealt with by the city spending its own money or by our preferred mode having the large financial institutions and the hedge funds join us. So I hope at some point today one member of the majority will tell us whether or not they agree, Mr. Chairman, that if this program survives, we should get it not from the taxpayer and not from the property taxpayers of our cities or rural areas, but from the large financial institutions. So that's what I hope will happen. Inspired, the gentleman from Virginia. And I wish to yield the balance of my time to the gentleman from California, Mr. Miller. The gentleman from California is recognized. Thank you for yielding. I, I totally support the gentleman from Virginia as a bin, but this is doing the right thing. It's saying we're going to take a billion dollars back of your money, the taxpayers, and we're going to pay off the deficit that we've created for you. It's about time we start paying down the debt. We cannot continue to spend dollars we don't have. Forty percent of every dollar we spent today is financed through the Treasury because we don't have the money. We're spending deficit dollars and it has to stop. But I want to return to the argument that my good friend, and I, and I respect my good friend, he knows that, makes. Somebody owned a home sometime, someplace, somewhere. Now, the individual who owned it, because it didn't just, wasn't created by a miracle, somebody built the house, somebody sold it to somebody, the individual might have got a loan on it from the bank. If the, if the individual defaulted on the loan, the bank might have taken the house back. But the federal government and the local agencies look at taxes. We look at income taxes, local government, city, county, looks at the property taxes. Somebody, some institution, is listed on the property tax bill. Now, at some point in time, they're going to continue to notice the owner, whoever it might be. If it's heir, you're going to get a notice. And it's going to say you did not pay your property taxes. At some point in time, that piece of property, home, vacated, abandoned, whatever it might be, is going up for a sale for property taxes. Now, if no... Yes, I'd we'll be happy to. What if it is abandoned and it is of not much value and has to be torn down. I'd be Who's happy to, I, I return the balance of my time. Uh, uh, if it's a public safety issue, a local government has a right to demolish property based on public safety. That assessment can be placed against the tax bill. Now, at some point in time, the local government, if they so choose, if nobody wants to pay a dollar for that property, can buy it based on the tax basis for a dollar. The problem with that is once the government entity buys the property, it's taken off the tax rolls. So some of my colleagues have talked about police and fire and the benefit to them. The worst thing you can do is eliminate funding through taxation for police you? and fire. I, I, I'd be happy to. We were told, for instance, by Detroit and Cleveland, they have abandoned property. There is no owner they can find, no owner with any I reclaim the balance of my property. Who's going to pay the I reclaim the balance of my time. If you go to any title company, it will list who the owner of record is. Regardless if you can find that entity or individual, it will list it. Regardless of who it is, at some point in time, it goes to a tax sale. At that point in time, the local government or an investor can buy it at a much reduced price for just the tax lien against it. And if it's abandoned and demolished and not worth anything, the tax bill is going to be very low. So somebody can pick up a very good deal on a piece of property by waiting for a tax sale. But if they choose not to, and they want to go out and just buy it as a city or a county, they can do that and get a very good deal on it. So to assume that because nobody can find an owner out there, somebody is listed, and the government has a right to foreclose based on tax lien. I yield back the balance of my time and ask for an I vote on the amendment. Ge gentleman's time has expired. The questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from uh, Minnesota. All those correction. The, the question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Virginia. All those in favor signify so by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. You see. Minnesota seeking a unanimous consent request. Purposes, the gentleman from Massachusetts seek recognition. 
Mr. Chairman, I was just told that I have a unanimous consent request that I didn't know I had. Um, so I now... Gentlemen, kindly state his unanimous consent request. I will as soon as I read what they handed me, Mr. Chairman. Um, I ask unanimous consent that the voice vote by which Amendment Number 1 was defeated be vacated to the end that the question... Uh, I read that wrong. I ask unanimous consent that the voice vote by which Amendment Number 1 was defeated be vacated so that the Chair may put the question de novo. I would Is there objection to the no. uh, unanimous consent request as made by the gentleman from Massachusetts. If not, the earlier voice vote is vacated. And the question is on amendment number one offered by the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Allison. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is adopted. It is now in order to consider amendment number three printed in Part B of House Report 112-34. And for what purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota seek recognition? Uh, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number three, printed in Part B of House Report number 112-34, offered by Mr. Ellison of Minnesota. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Ellison, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Minnesota. I yield myself such time as I may consider. recognized. Mr. Chair, the middle class is shrinking and deficits are rising because, men, because the Republicans are giving a pass to special interests who cheated some homeowners and wrecked our economy. Instead of working to keep the middle class families in their homes, the Republican plan is to foreclose on the American middle class. The amendment I have right in here in front of you describes findings which talk about the positive benefits of the neighborhood stabilization program. This program is a good program and no matter what may happen here today, the record should reflect the benefits of this program. This program, uh, this program was good, and the amendment offers language which sets forth findings. And the findings state the positive impacts of the neighborhood stabilization program, including assisting local governments, supporting jobs, and impacting approximately 100,000 properties. The highlights of this amendment I reflect about the neighborhood stabilization program, talk about the positive benefits to the, to the community that the neighborhood stabilization program benefited local governments and helped local governments. And the fact is, uh, Mr. Chair, local governments really did benefit from this program and the, and the record should be reflected and the bill should report language that talks about those benefits. And I'd like to just say this as well, Mr. Chair. The fact is that it is true that once an abandoned property is, is sitting there on the tax rolls after a certain amount of time, somebody may at some point buy it, as the gentleman on the other side says. But what happens in the meantime? In the meantime, the grass grows, dead cats and dogs get left there. In the meantime, the windows are broken. In the meantime, people's uh, property uh, values plummet. In the meantime, we have a, 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 an attractive nuisance where young people might be pulled in there and taken advantage of. Horrible stories have happened, Mr. Chair. And so, yeah, the, the gentleman has been right in his argumentation. It's sometime, sometime in the future, maybe somebody will buy this run-down, abandoned, stripped-out property with no copper left in it, with neighbors who have just been decimated in the property of their homes, the value of their homes. But that would be a far cry from what we could do. And if we're going to terminate this program, which has helped so many local governments, we should at least put language and findings in the record which reflect the positive aspects of this program, including the 93,000 jobs that we're getting rid of and the 100,000 properties that we've already helped and the more that we could help. And I, um, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from California, is, is, is he, he opposed to the amendment? I rise in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. I sealed myself as much time as I might consume. The gentleman's recognized. If you want to talk about attractive nuisances, let's talk about next April when people have to pay their taxes. You're going to find out that government has become an incredible attractive nuisance to most people. We're talking about middle classes shrinking. Yeah, we're taxing them to death. And we're not only taxing them to death, we're spending money on programs like this that's not an investment, it's just a giveaway of tax dollars. Now we say, uh, we can't find the data to support that we've, we've bought 100,000 properties, 
But let's say we bought 100,000 properties. Somebody has, with the money, with $6 billion to go to seven, we've given them. That's about 20,000 homes per state. Now, you break that down to high-impact counties. Compared to the millions of homes out there that are in foreclosure, these 100,000 100, homes have already been abandoned or foreclosed. I will say abandoned because my other side of the aisle wants to talk about abandoned homes. But they're homes that somebody does not live in anymore. And the people who lost them, yes, they lost them. And how many jobs were created? Nobody can definitively give me a number because nobody knows for sure how much money was spent on jobs. Now, we can say we spent $6 billion, but understand clearly we bought properties with the bulk of that money. Now, how much money did we spend after the local groups, the nonprofits, took 17% off the top for overheads and expenses? How much did we spend for jobs? Now, if we had taken that $6 billion going on $7 billion and invested in it residential construction, just $1 billion, as I said, in residential construction, creates $5.5 million in wages. It creates $1.98 billion in spending on goods and services as a result of the new earnings and profits that were created through that. Now, those goods and services, those companies employ workers. The wages are paid to workers. So you can, you can definitively come up with a number based on a $1 billion investment that we would generate in the economy. Now, we spent $6 billion. And if we were able to create what $1 billion would have created in private residential construction, we're probably lucky. But the problem with that is investing in residential construction is different than giving $6 billion away of the taxpayers' monies. Now, the people listening to this debate understand when you write your check to the federal government next month, we just gave away $6 billion, of, we're going to give away another billion. Now, that infuriates me. I would assume it infuriates you. You tell me, middle class America, what this does to help you. Now, I've told you the amounts earlier of how much you can earn to buy a house or how little you might have to pay for the house depending on whoever bought the house, what they want to charge, and who they want to sell it to. So the basis argued here in the amendment does nothing. I oppose it, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Minnesota. Uh, may I inquire to the remaining time? The gentleman from Minnesota has two and a half minutes remaining. Mr. Chairman, let me only add this, that this language, which should be put in the bill and this amendment calls for, sets forth in the record the positive impacts of the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, which should be memorialized in the bill, things like job creation, saving neighborhoods, saving local governments, exorbitant costs. The Republican caucus has not created a single job, and now they're even eliminating jobs. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back his time. The gentleman from California. That's the time. The gentleman's recognized for two minutes. The facts speak for themselves. When you can say $1.3 billion was given away to non-governmental agencies, and I've listed the groups, and I've told you how many millions of your dollars were given to these groups that they get to keep. They're not coming back to us right now. These people are going to keep these monies, and there's a wide array of things they can use them for. This was a bad investment. In fact, it was not investment. It was a bad giveaway. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. All times expired. The questions on the amendment is offered by the gentleman from Minnesota. All those in favor signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The opinion of the chair of the noes have it. The man recorded have vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Minnesota will be postponed. It is now in order to consider Amendment Number 4, printed in Part B of House Report 112-34. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from California seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment Number 4, printed in the Part B of House Report Number 112-34, offered by Ms. Loretta Sanchez of California. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentlewoman from California will control, uh, 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 will control five minutes, and a member opposed will control five minutes. The gentlelady from California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of my amendment. My amendment would state simply that the Congress acknowledges that we could have helped to rebuild neighborhoods 
where foreclosures are common through the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, or as we know it, NSP. You see, my Republican colleagues are offering today a bill that would terminate NSP. This program, I believe, has been particularly successful in helping to rebuild neighborhoods in my district and throughout Orange County, California. The city of Anaheim, which I represent, acquired and rehabilitated 17 single-family homes and sold them to low to moderate income families. It also acquired and rehabilitated a four-unit multifamily complex for lease to persons with developmental disabilities. This project was crucial because it is very difficult to find properties uh, for people who have developmental disabilities. In Anaheim, one in 303 homes is in foreclosure. Not only does this have an emotional impact, as you can imagine, when you use your home, it's the instability, especially towards your kids. Uh, parents and are, are worried, and children can see that. It also has economic impacts on our neighborhoods. With the help of this program, the city of Anaheim improved neighborhoods and provided the families with homes. And I know that my colleague on the uh, Republican side also represents Anaheim, and if he would have spoken to some of the staff from Anaheim, he would have realized that they really believe that this program was important to keep blight from happening in neighborhoods and to attempt to keep the prices of the homes level for those families that were struggling to make their payments and to stay in their homes and to keep up their neighborhood. The city of Garden Grove, where one in 348 homes is in foreclosure, also acquired and rehabilitated property. They acquired and rehabilitated five homes and sold them to first-time home buyers. And of course, the city of Santa Ana, where one in 252 homes is in foreclosure. They acquired and rehabilitated 13 single-family homes, 27 condos, and they sold them to first-time home buyers. They acquired and renovated a 13-unit multifamily complex and have leased them now to low-income families. And they assisted five families with down payment assistance. And they're also in the process of acquiring 16 single-family homes that will be sold to first-time home buyers. Now, I know that my colleague on the other side mentioned that the, some of this money went to non-governmental uh, agencies, uh, to, to non-governmental, so, so private companies. But I would like him to really take a look at the fact that cities really stepped up to work very hard to keep families in their homes, to keep neighborhoods afloat as we work through this very difficult time of the financial meltdown and the housing crisis. In Orange County, the Neighborhood Housing Services, with the assistance of what we call NSP Round 1 monies, acquired and rehabilitated a total of 11 single-family homes and condos. And with Round 2 monies, the Neighborhood Housing Services acquired and rehabilitated 17 single-family homes and condos and sold them to first-time home buyers. This program has helped to rebuild our neighborhoods, to stabilize our neighborhoods, and have given families the opportunity to become homeowners. So it is my hope that my colleagues on the other side reconsider eliminating what I believe has been a successful program in Orange County, California, one that has benefited not just those who got to buy their first home, but those neighborhoods and those cities that so desperately needed to keep up the neighborhood and get people in their homes. Thank you, and I reserve the rest of my time. The gentlelady reserves the balance of her time. Who rises in opposition to the amendment? Is it, is the I rise in opposition from California to the amendment. in opposition to the amendment? Yes, I do. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. You saw, I saw there was much time as I might consume. Well, my good friend, she mentioned the neighborhood housing uh, services of Orange County, they got seven and a half million dollars for 17 houses. Orange County, overall, the whole county, got 4.3 million dollars for the whole county. 4.3 million dollars. And you have to say, is that a good investment? We have spent six billion dollars on this program. And we're saying, let's not spend the last billion. And the minute says Congress could have rebuilt U.S. neighborhoods. There's only a billion dollars left. Now, I don't see that U.S. neighborhoods have been rebuilt 
for $6 billion. I see $6 billion that has been given away of taxpayers' monies, and Orange County itself, which considers is a huge area, irrespective of the few examples were given by my good friend, only got $4.3 million. That's not equitable. San Bernardino County, one of the hardest hit counties in this country, hardest hit, got a mere $33.2 million, one of the hardest hit. That's the county. That had to go to all these cities that did not receive any distribution in NSP1 or NSP2. Nothing. And they're having to take in Orange County with $4.3 million, take that and distribute it to all these cities that did not receive a dime. That's not fair. And to say that we spent $6 billion and all the counties already and cities haven't been rehabilitated, it's obvious. And to say we're going to spend one more billion dollars and that's going to solve the problem? No, it's not. It's just going to take and put us another billion dollars in debt that our children or grandchildren are going to have to pay for. And I uh, reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentlelady from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would remind the gentleman from uh, California that uh, some cities, it's true, did not receive monies and did not go through the process of uh, buying up homes, et cetera, and trying to get neighborhoods back. Um, one of the reasons they did not is it's really a competitive situation. Uh, you have to want to do it, and some cities simply did not have the need or did not want to do it. I mean, it would be, uh, uh, I would assume that in some places so in Orange County, um, you could probably do, as the gentleman said, and that is to uh, sell uh, at, a, at a fire sale some of those homes on Newport Beach or other places. But with respect to the central portion of Orange County, where you really have uh, households that are working families, uh, this program was very, very important. And the city stepped up, the cities of Anaheim, the cities of Garden Grove, the cities of Santa Ana, stepped up to do the right thing to work through and to ensure that their neighborhoods again were stabilized um, and, and to get new people into those homes. Again, I do believe that it worked for those cities and um, I would encourage a yes vote on this amendment, Mr. Chairman. Thank Gen you. And I yield back. The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman from California. I yield myself the balance of my time. Gentleman's recognized. The problem I have with the program, I just mentioned San Bernardino County. And according to the county, there's no one at the county level that would support the current NSP program. And they state very specifically, the county might have supported the concept of NSP, but this is before they fell victim to a complete lack of direction from HUD, mixed messages from HUD, and gross mis misallocations of the awards that were released. And the county, in support of my bill, said we believe it is a means for Congress to get its financial house in order, just like the challenges we are facing at the local government level. And not only government facing challenges, the American people are facing challenges. They're working hard. They're trying to support their families. They're trying to make their house payments. Nothing in this last billion dollars will stop one foreclosure from occurring. And I yield the balance of my time to the gentleman. Thank you to the good gentleman from California, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's, look, I've been a member now of this august body for 75 some days, and I'm starting to learn much of what we do seems to be more based in theater than um, reality. If, this, if I read this amendment correctly, what we're trying to do here is add language that basically says, well, we could repair neighborhoods with the last billion dollars. Of course, it didn't happen with the um, previous money. But think about it. If we take a step back, what's the money been used ultimately for? It's been used to bail out lenders. In many ways, this is another backdoor bailout to the very folks that my constituents are furious with and handing them more government dollars in the name that, well, we passed this time, we passed the cash to those lenders, but this time we did it through local governments. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back any time. Uh, the time of the gentleman from California has expired. All time has expired. The questions on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from California, those in favor signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it and the amendment's not agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number five printed in part B of House Report 112-34. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California seek recognition? 
Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number five, printed in Part B of House Report Number 112-34, offered by Ms. Richardson of California. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Richardson, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Richardson Amendment to H.R. 861, the Neighborhood Stabilization Program Termination Act, which we've been talking about this afternoon, is a vehicle to discuss a program that's really urgently needed when it was established, when it was funded in the Recovery Act, and why it's still needed today. The Richardson Amendment is simple, it's straightforward, and it's necessary. It takes the politics out of it. It says the amendment talks about that the program should be terminated based upon whether it's needed or not, not based upon using funny numbers. Now let's talk about this particular bill. I'm suggesting with the Richardson Amendment that we would consider two things. One, that it would be based upon a termination of five years after the initial date of enactment. Number two, that the date would be triggered when the national average of underwater mortgages would be at a point that it's 10 percent or less, or in the highest state that happens to have high mortgages, that it would be at least 15 percent, and if it didn't meet that test, then it would be terminated. Now, the most current data available in the third quarter of 2010 reported by CoreLogic, a leading provider of mortgage information, indicates that of the nation's 47.8 million residential mortgages, approximately 10.8, that's 22.5 percent, are underwater. In Nevada, the percentage is 67 percent. In Arizona, it's 48.6 percent. In Florida, it's 45.5 percent. And in Mr. Miller and I, our great state, California, it's 31.6 percent. I ask unanimous consent to include in the record a chart indicating the underwater mortgage percentages for each state in the nation. Gentlewoman's statement will be covered by General Leave. Now, clearly the housing crisis is far from over, and anyone who thinks that we've stabilized the neighborhoods in this country is not really living in the real world, certainly not with Americans like who live in my district. So now it's time to not terminate NSP. Instead, it should be phased out gradually after it serves the purpose of what it was intended to do. I offer the Richardson Amendment because the NSP grants provide critical assistance to state and local governments and nonprofit developers that collaborate. How do they collaborate? To demolish or rehabilitate blighted properties, to establish financing mechanisms, such as down payment programs for low to middle income home buyers. And it also helps with the grantees with at least 25 percent of the funds to be appropriated to house individuals and families whose incomes do not exceed 50 percent of the area's median income. When I look at this, it's also important NSP funds and is helping to redevelop areas, hard hit communities, and to create jobs. In fact, 9,700 blighted properties have been demolished or have been cleared. HUD estimates that NSP will support 93,000 jobs nationwide. I think we need those. And then finally, when we look at some of the groups that are supporting these programs, it's not about who's on this side of the aisle and who's on the other one. It's the National Association of Counties, the National League of Cities, the U.S. Conference of Mayors. That's what the housing officials in my district are talking about, is having a way to be able to solve the problem. I reserve the balance of my time. The woman reserves the balance of this, her time. General, does the gentleman from California rise in opposition to the yes, amendment? Yes, I do. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I yield myself as much time as I might consume. The is recognized. I guess the question should be how long do we need to wait? How many more billions of dollars needs to be given away? We've already spent six billion dollars. I guess we could spend more if somebody wanted to. And when we talk about phasing out a program, it speaks to the argument that we need to spend more money on a program and continue the program. I think we've already spent too much money. I'd be happy to. Uh, the question that was asked is how long we should wait. In my amendment, that's my exact point. It's not how long we should wait. It's whether it's needed or not. I, I so if my we time. find that the mortgages on, are time. above 10 on or 15 this percent, issue, then the program is, should exist. I reclaim my time. The gentleman is recognized. On this issue, how long we wait is predicated on how much we're going to spend. And my colleagues on this side, I believe the American people, the taxpayers, have given too much of their money away. 
and they're saying we want it stopped and we want you to be responsible for this money. If this were our dollars and we're getting in her purse and my wallet and handing the money out, that's a prerogative we have. That's not what's occurring other than we are taxpayers too. We just got our hands in your pocket and your purse and spent your money on a giveaway program. I ask for a no vote and I, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Gentlewoman from California. A uh, gentlewoman has one and a half minutes remaining. Madam Chairwoman, in regards to the comments that have been recently stated, uh, for the largest city that's in our state of California, from Mayor Antonio Viragosa, he states that the NSP has helped cities across the country to address and mitigate the terrible effects of what this crisis has done. In closing, what I would also say is that my amendment is really building upon what I hope both sides of the aisle would consider, and that is this program should be based upon if there is a need, then it should, as, it, as, it should assist. If there is no longer a need, then I would support phasing it out. And what I would also say is that the key point to keep in mind is when we're looking at this program, this program people need, it's for the counties and the cities to determine to be able to help improve their programs. And that's the way the program is intended. And if there's unintended consequences or things that can be done to support the program, I would work with my colleague on the other side of the aisle to fix those changes. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlewoman yields back the Speaker, balance of our time. I meant, For what I meant, purpose the gentleman from California I meant to reserve right? the balance of my time rather than yield back uh, the balance of my time. Is there a unanimous consent that the gentleman may reclaim his time? If the gentleman was kind to me, I'll extend it back. I'd be happy to yield as much time as Mr. Schweikert might consume. Uh, the gentleman is recognized for up to three and a half minutes. Um, uh, uh, Madam Chairman, um, in th on this Richardson Amendment, it it's interesting because I always like amendments that are trying to do something technical, um, but where I'm finding actually sort of a, f a problem in the flow of logic is think about this. We have a neighborhood stabilization program down to its last billion dollars. We've already spent, what, six? And the concept written in this amendment is saying, that, well, it's going to keep acquiring um, one, two, three to four unit to fourplexes properties, and it's going to keep acquiring them until a certain number of mortgages are only this percentage are underwater, or the mortgage value is greater than the value of the house. Is, does that seem I'm going the right direction? Fairly. Um, but here's a classic problem in the design of that. If the Neighborhood Stabilization Act does what I think it does, is I have a municipality, a nonprofit, this and that, buying a property, sometimes rehabbing it, sometimes removing the boarded up windows, sometimes just buying a property and competing with the private investors and the first time home buyers in that neighborhood, and then turning around and putting it back on the market. Well, if one of our problems out there is we have a glut of properties on the market, and that's one of the things holding down our values, and I'm going to continue to support a program that's going to drop another billion dollars buying properties and then putting them back on the market. It's, we have a circular logic here where I can't imagine the mechanics within this, well-meaning as they may be, actually have any basis in economics or particularly real estate economics. Uh, Madam Chairman, I yield back what time I have reserve. remaining to... I reserve what time I have. Yes, reclaiming my time. A very excellent point. The other part that I think is significant that needs to be dealt with here is the $6 billion that has already been given away. That money continues to recycle with those groups. It should. The cities, the counties, the nonprofits. When they buy a house, refurbish it, and sell it, the money comes back at whatever level. They can take that money and buy another piece of property. So nothing in my bill does anything with the $6 billion that's out there. It just says, we're not going to give you another billion dollars. We're going to try to give that back to the taxpayers. If we could get the six billion dollars back and find a way to do it, I believe we'd be trying to attack that vein too. But that will not occur and cannot occur. The money's already been given away. They're going to continue to recycle it, hopefully to some benefit, and hopefully somebody will benefit from this. But it's six billion dollars given away. Um, my colleague is exactly correct in his statements, but the one billion dollars that we have not given away, we're saying it's time to stop giving away taxpayers' dollars. I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, the, the gentlewoman from California may request unanimous consent to reclaim the 30 seconds that she has remaining. I request unanimous consent to reclaim the remaining 30 seconds. Is there a, any objection? Seeing none, gentlewoman is recognized for 30 seconds. 
Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Just to summarize again, what my amendment is talking about is the ability for state and local governments to revitalize and rehab and help the neighborhoods so that those property values can go up and we can improve the economy. And I would venture to say it's not giving away the money, it's actually helping to revitalize and stimulate our economy. I yield back the balance. Gentlewoman of my yields time. back all time for debate is uh, complete. Uh, the question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number six, printed in part B of House Report 112 34. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from California rise? I have an amendment to H.R. 861 at the desk. The clerk will designate number the amendment. Number 10. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 6, printed in Part B of House Report number 112-34, offered by Ms. Waters of California. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Waters, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The gentlewoman from California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. Gentlewoman is recognized. Madam Chair, my amendment would simply require the Secretary of Department of Housing and Urban Development to send a notice to all of the NSP grantees that would have received funding under the third round of NSP that the program has been terminated. Further, the notice would include the name and contact information for the member of Congress representing that grantee's district, along with the notice saying that the grantee can contact that member directly for assistance in mitigating foreclosed properties. As you know, we passed such an amendment off the floor when we uh, took up the FHA uh, bill that would have uh, basically allowed um, uh, the constituents, uh, the homeowners, to refinance their program. So we have one such amendment in, uh, with the elimination of that program. Um, the CBO has scored this amendment at zero cost. Since the passage of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010, which provided the NSP funds that are now subject to this repeal, my office has received many calls from potential grantees about the status of the program and what funding they could expect. Because this act would rescind those funds nearly eight months after passage of Dodd-Frank, I think that a simple letter from HUD sent to states, counties, and cities simply notifying them of this change is in order. Moreover, a note to these states, counties, and cities saying that their member of Congress is available to assist them in mitigating foreclosed properties can help these grantees find alternative solutions. I've discovered there are any number of members who are starting to do this kind of thing. They're getting calls uh, from their constituents, asking them to help them with loan modifications, and they're able to not get involved with the uh, particular problem, but to help guide them and send them to the proper servicer where they should be going to get that loan modification. And this is similar to that. Simply, our office has been able to say, uh, yes, the program is no longer in existence, but this is what you can do if there's an alternative. Now, I would prefer not to rehash the back and forth we saw in the Financial Services Committee about the termination of this program. Members on my side of the aisle showed pictures, talked about the problems caused by abandoned properties, and even showcased letters from their districts talking about the good work NSP was doing. But the debate seems it will not sway my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Instead, I think it's best to focus on my amendment. I believe this is a common sense provision that can be accepted by both sides of the aisle, regardless of whether they agree with the underlying bill. Grantees should be made aware of this funding rescission, and members of Congress should stand ready to help communities mitigate the efforts, uh, the effects, rather, of blighted properties. I would ask my colleagues' support, and I will... Um, um, retain uh, the balance General of woman time. reserves the balance of her time. Uh, does the gentleman from California claim uh, time in opposition? I do. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I yield myself as much time as I may. Gentleman is recognized. The Congresswoman's amendment does nothing to help at-risk borrowers, and the notification Congresswoman proposes would apply only to community groups, 
leaders and speculators currently participating in the program. It is not a serious attempt to address the underlying problem homeowners are facing today. If we're going to have a notification requirement, it makes more sense to have the recipient of these funds to date notify taxpayers how much and in what way they have spent the taxpayers' dollars and what return taxpayers can expect from their investment. Unfortunately, the answer is none. Many have questioned HUD's ability to properly monitor the use of such extraordinary amounts of money being spent at the state level and in various ways. The Inspector General from HUD has already identified multiple misuses of NSP money at the state level and the GEO has requested information system in place at HUD and questions its ability to track NSP funds. I wish the amendment had said, please continue using the $6 billion in an appropriate way and in some way do everything you can to create jobs for the American workers with the $6 billion we've given you. It does not say that. Um, I, I cannot support the amendment the way it's drafted, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves the balance of this time. The gentlewoman from California. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I've heard so many convoluted arguments today from the opposite side of the aisle about this legislation. My colleague from California and my friend, uh, someone that I highly respect, knows that he does not have to wish what an amendment could, would say. If he's interested in an amendment, he can offer it. My colleague from California did not offer the amendment that he's just alluded to. He did not suggest when we were in committee uh, that somehow he would like to have an alternative, uh, but I find it rather curious that he would come to the floor and start wishing about what my amendment would say. Uh, secondly, I want to straighten out something. My colleague from California keeps talking about this bill does not stop any foreclosures. It, the, bill, the NSP legislation was not intended to stop foreclosures. It was intended to do exactly what the name implies, and that is stabilize communities by taking these boarded up and abandoned properties, rehabbing them or tearing them down so that they discontinue uh, the devaluing of the property of those homeowners who are trying to keep their properties up and stay in the community. If he, in fact, was concerned about helping homeowners, he would have supported the FHA refi program. That program he voted against. FHA refi program was a program basically for middle class people who paid their bills on time but who simply knew that their homes were underwater. They were not worth what they thought they were, what should be worth when they got into the mortgage and they wanted to refinance them. He voted against that. So I'm not so sure when he talks about this NSP program not helping anybody to stay in their homes, whether or not he really, really wants to try and help people stay in their homes when he's voting against something like the FHA refi. As for jobs, this bill creates jobs, and I think my colleague knows that. I yield back the balance. Gentlewoman yields back the balance of her time. Gentleman from California. Well, I did not, um, I yield myself as much time as I could say. I not, did not uh, introduce an amendment because I introduced the bill. I think that bill speaks for itself, but I'm I'm glad that my good friend admitted that this was not meant to mitigate the foreclosure process, process for people that they're going through. I'm glad you admitted that because that's not what your amendment says. So that such entities should contact such members of Congress directly for assistance in mitigating foreclosed properties. Can't mitigate a foreclosure when you don't help anybody with the foreclosure. I'd be happy to yield a minute to Mr. Schweikert. Um, recognized. Madam Chairman, and um, first, this is one of those few moments I get to stand behind the uh, microphone and say, um, having uh, met the good woman from California, she's actually been very gentle to me as a freshman so far. But one of my great concerns here is very, very simple. There's $6 billion out there, and it's functionally, I won't call it a slush fund. Back in my days as Maricopa County Treasurer, we would refer to it as a revolving fund. There's six billion dollars out there already that goes out and if the property is sold comes back and that I believe operates for five years from the enactment of the bill. Well a letter like this that goes out and says oh well the last billion dollars isn't going to be there for you but please keep using the six billion you already have to go do more good works in the neighborhood. It's my great fear is something like this doesn't really accomplish much good. Um, Madam Chairman, I yield back any remainder of the time. I um, yield myself the balance of our time. 
as much as I respect my good friend, and she knows we've worked together on a lot of issues, and I don't believe anything between us has ever been personal in all the years we've known each other, and nothing in this debate was personal. And we, we both are well-intended. We both really want to help the American people, and I, I, I say that from my heart, and you know that. And I, I know your efforts are for the right purposes, but good people can disagree in a good way. And on this amendment, I have to respectfully disagree, and I would ask for a no vote. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, yields back the balance of this time. All time for debate has expired. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the uh, I, the no would happened. request an I vote. The amendment, uh, gentlewoman from California. Re I'm sorry, I request a vote on that. Uh. Does the gentlewoman request a recorded vote? A recorded vote, yes. Pursuant to clause six of rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from California rise? Um, I have another amendment at the desk. Uh, the clerk will designate the amendment. Sorry. Amendment number seven, printed in part B of House Report number 112-34, offered by Ms. Waters of California. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Waters, and a member opposed to each will control five minutes. Chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield to myself uh, such time as I may consider. The gentlewoman is recognized. Madam Chair, my amendment would direct the Secretary of HUD to conduct a study to determine the approximate number of foreclosed and abandoned properties that will not be purchased or rehabilitated in the district of each member of Congress as a result of the rescission and termination of funding under this act. The Secretary would then report these finding to, findings to Congress. CBO has scored this amendment at zero cost. Now, personally, I do not believe that the Neighborhood Stabilization Program should be terminated because NSP creates jobs. So far, about 72,000 housing units are projected to be impacted by round one of NSP. HUD projects that an additional 24,000 housing units are projected to be impacted by NSP2. Each of these projects required the work of contractors such as roofers and painters and landscapers and pavers. And through the program, other real estate professionals like realtors and title insurance agents have also received employment and contracting opportunities. This uh, NSP program really does create jobs. And this is a program that creates jobs by doing important work in the community. Contrary to what some say, the, problems, uh, the problem of homes abandoned by banks is common, and it is difficult for municipalities to mitigate their effects. As GAO has noted in a report from November 2010, services sometimes charge off properties or fail to formally foreclose on bars because the cost of maintaining the property post foreclosure exceed the cost of just writing the property off. These charge-offs typically occur after the foreclosure proceedings were initiated. However, bars aren't aware that the services are stopping short of taking their title. Because bars think that their servicer has finalized the foreclosure process, they may move away and become unreachable by the municipal agency now dealing with up the upkeep of the property. Now, additionally, it may become logistically difficult or cost prohibitive to track down thousands of bars now responsible for property maintenance, taxes, and code violations because of services failure to formally foreclose. Additionally, NSP provides an alternative to speculative investors purchasing foreclosed properties. Unlike homeowners and municipalities, some speculative um, investors often purchase properties for cash and in bulk, sometimes sight unseen, buying them up before others have a chance to bid. Some of these investors may not resell properties to owner occupants, but let them sit on the market without any improvements while the investor waits for housing prices to rebound. Alternatively, anecdotal evidence suggests that investor owners sometimes rent properties out 
to tenants with little or no rehabilitation or maintenance of the property. We had a field hearing in Minneapolis in January 2010. At that field hearing, State Senator Linda Higgins said, homes are being snapped up by investors. Some are clueless about how to rehabilitate a building and get good tenants. Others think that the laws really aren't meant for them. They buy a house for pennies, paint the walls, scrub the kitchen appliances, and rent it out. They forget the small details like the condemnation order and the requirements for lifting the condemnation and getting a new certificate of occupancy and the need for a rental license. That is not to say that all private investment is bad, but we must recognize that the work NSP is doing is a critical counterweight to some of these bad practices. For all of these reasons, I will defend the work that NSP is doing across the country. However, we hear now no more uh, narrow, we um, are here now uh, because we need to talk about this amendment and what it would do uh, once this program is terminated. My NSP study amendment would provide critical information to members of Congress. If members knew the number of abandoned and foreclosed properties in their district that will not be mitigated because of this recession, rescission of funds, they would be better prepared to have grantees access responsible private market sources of funds that can help community revitalization. I would ask my colleagues support and yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman wishes to yield back. Does the gentlewoman wish to yield back? Her time has expired. Gentleman from California. Uh, excuse me, be, uh, uh, The gentlewoman's Chair. time has expired. Thank you. Uh, for what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? I rise in opposition to the. the gentleman's time. recognized for five minutes. I yield myself as much time as I might consume. Gentleman's recognized. Well, my friend has said um, that we need to determine the approximate number of foreclosed and abandoned properties that will be purchased or rehabilitated because of the termination of the NSP. That's impossible. Um, we have no idea how many times the money will be recycled because the six billion that's out there could be recycled over and over and over. We don't know. We don't know how many of it's going to be given away to somebody who bought the house, how much is going to be taken back in the sale. So that's an unknown quantity. But my good friend did say that 72,000 units were impacted by NSP1. So America, for six billion dollars, you impacted 72,000 units. How do you feel about that? Now, I'm not sure what we did to impact them, but we impacted them. We sure spent a lot of your money impacting them. Now, at the same time, we're asking HUD to do a study. That's like the fox guarding the hen house. I'm really sorry. Because when I asked Mercedes Marquez of HUD at our committee hearing to discuss where the money went, she finally said, quote, the money's going to homeowners and to American citizens. And they strongly support the program and they're strongly encouraging the president to veto this bill should it get to him. So, let's just have the very organization do a study on a program that they said they support and love, and if we're successful in getting the bill passed, we'll encourage the administration to veto it. Um, that's the biggest conflict of interest I've ever had presented to me to vote on. But it's an easy conflict of interest that I say is a conflict of interest, I would strongly encourage my colleagues to vote no, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. All time on this amendment has expired. Uh, the question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not Madam agreed chair, to. I would request the gentlewoman from vote. California. Yes. I would request a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on will be postponed. It's now in order to consider Amendment Number 8, printed in Part B of House Report 112-34. For what purposes does the gentlewoman from New York rise? Uh, Madam Chair, I have an amendment at the desk which is in order under the rule. Clerk will designate the amendment. The amendment number eight, printed in Part B of House Report Number 112-34, offered by Mrs. Maloney of New York. Pursuant to House Resolution 170, the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Maloney, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New York. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I rise in support of my amendment to the Neighborhood Stabilization Program Termination Act, which will quantify the number of vacant homes across the country 
and add findings to the bill listing these numbers in every state uh, so that it'll be transparent exactly what the impact will be in not continuing this program that is needed. Uh, the, the Neighborhood St Stabilization Program is one of four programs that the, my friends and colleagues on the other side of the aisle are, are attempting to eliminate. And all of these programs, in one way or another, help to stabilize neighborhoods and help to provide affordable housing and keep people in their homes. Economists have test testified before our committee and, and other committees that uh, housing is as much as 25 percent of our economy. So it's critical that we do what we can to stabilize housing, not just for the benefit of the families benefiting from the housing, but also for their neighbors, for the localities, for their cities, for their states, and for the overall economy. Foreclosed properties lead to volatile housing prices, blight, and, and the deterioration of communities. Uh, the mayor of New York uh, cited at a recent uh, a meeting of the delegation, how important the neighborhood stabilization program has been to helping uh, New York recover from the housing crisis. He said that over 500 uh, units were rehabbed and converted into affordable rental housing through the three rounds of, of funding that has come forward. Now, some of my colleagues say this is not important or should not be a priority. But I can tell you it has been a life-saving program, uh, particularly to the families that are living there now and to their neighbors and to the housing prices in the neighbors where these housing units are located. Funding has also been used to assist multifamily buildings in distress and has provided long-term affordability for renters. It has also provided jobs. The number two priorities of most communities across this country are housing and jobs, and this program helps provide both. My amendment points out why the program is so desperately needed by listing through findings the number of vacant homes that uh, could be eligible for funding by state. Uh, for example, in the home state of my good friend and colleague, Mr. Miller, uh, California, there are over 92,000 homes that have been vac vacant for 90 or more days in my uh, state of New York, there are over 16,000 homes that have been vacant for over 90 days. The, the amendment clarifies that by terminating the program, vacant homes across the country cannot benefit from the neighborhood stabilization funds that could help acquire, demolish in some cases, rehab in some cases, and re redevelop in other cases. We've all seen the pictures on television of bulldozers plowing vacant homes under uh, because they're pulling down the prices and, and the blight in neighborhoods. This is one program that I've received phone calls, not just from the, the mayor in the city in which I serve, but in cities across this country where they have expressed the importance of the program in helping them to stabilize and to recover uh, from this financial crisis caused primarily from the subprime mortgages. The Neighborhood Stabilization Program accomplishes the dual goals of incentivizing home ownership while also improving the housing stock in neighborhoods devastated by the foreclosure. And uh, a vacant foreclosed uh, uh, properties have a very negative effect on the surrounding neighborhoods and on the property values of homes in those neighborhoods. I, I, I believe this is an important amendment to highlight the potential housing stock in this country that neighborhood stabilization funds uh, could be used to help to rehab, to redevelop, to resell, to preserve neighborhood property values and communities across our great country. So I urge my colleagues to support my amendment and I, 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 uh, I, I preserve the balance of my time. The woman reserves the balance of her time. Gentleman from California, does a gentleman rise and